But honestly, I think this is a solution because I've never met a toddler who actually puts their shoes on the right way. I'm Femke Dierks, Head of Decorative Arts and mother of two tiny humans. And as parents of small children, we know it can be quite a challenge to take them to the museum, but it's also a lot of fun. And the smaller the child, the more stuff you need. That made me wonder about the baby registries of the past. Take this crib. It would fit my nine-month-old very well. It's made of oak combined with ebony details. And the architectural shape of the legs is very similar to those on tables and cabinets made in the same period in the 17th century. So it would match the rest of the interior very well. This cradle is also made of ebony, combined with ivory. The Hindu mythological sea creatures might look a little scary, but they're actually associated with the gods of love and desire, so they wish the child well. The cradle was made for the child of an officer of the Dutch East India Company. And it rocks from left to right to soothe the child. In paintings you even see that a rope would be attached to it, so you could rock the child remotely. My daughter's rattles are not made of materials quite as exclusive as this one. But I'm sure she would love it. The rattle fits nicely into baby's hand and the bells give a lovely sound. One end is shaped like a flute, while the other one holds a piece of rock crystal that was great for teething. The rattle is made of very thin golden threads and would have been very expensive. Most likely it was given as a pillegift, the first present a child received from its godparents. Parents in the 17th century were very worried that the bumps and falls that go along with learning how to walk could permanently damage their child's brain. So instead of baby-proofing the house, they house-proofed the baby and put a padded ring around the child's head while they were learning how to walk. Susanna's shoes may not look very comfortable because they didn't have a left and a right shoe, they were actually identical. But honestly, I think this is a solution because I've never met a toddler who actually puts their shoes on the right way. Decorating the nursery was serious business in the 17th century. The layette, a complete set of clothes and bed sheets and toiletries, everything a newborn needed, was often presented to the mother in a special basket. In this extraordinary case, an entire cabinet was made for it. When you look at the garland in the center of the cabinet, you can see an entire 17th century baby registry, from the fire basket used to dry and warm up diapers, to the backer mat, a kind of 17th century changing station that you use on your lap, not on a commode. To the cutest little baby shoes, a cradle and the cockstool that functioned as a high chair and toilet at the same time. And of course, our rattle again. As a little girl, the absolute highlight of a visit to the Rijksmuseum were the dolls' houses. Now I get to take my own daughters and pour over the magnificent world created in these houses. And they're a great way for a perceptive toddler to learn everyday words. These houses were not children's toys, however. They were collector's cabinets created by wealthy ladies to show their ideal interiors. And because the birth of a child was, and still is, a momentous occasion, almost all these houses have a so-called lying-in room, a kind of nursery and recovery room combined. Because the birth of a child was much more dangerous in the 17th century than it is today, when mother and child survived the birth, they were put on a strict regiment of bed rest for the first six weeks in this room,
we recognize a lot of objects that we also saw in the cabinet. The layette, the cradle, the bagramot, and the silver gifts. Only the breast pump is missing. But wealthy ladies had a solution for that too. The wet nurse, who would breastfeed the child instead of the mother. You often recognize them from their red bodices. They were the local attire in Waterland, a region just above Amsterdam, where a lot of wet nurses came from. There's a lot to learn about children in the museum. And there's a lot of fun to be had with your own kids. Let us know how you enjoyed the Rijksmuseum with your family.